The Vision app is the best place to find a growing range of homegrown, on-demand audio to help you look to God daily. You can listen to Faith and Fostering with Christians chatting about foster care in an Australian context. Plus, be encouraged by Pastor Terry Nightingale's four-minute devotions with new episodes added each week in the free Vision Christian Media app. If you don't already have the app on your smartphone or tablet, download it now from vision.org.au slash app. Vision.org.au slash app. Vision. A biblical perspective on life, culture and current events. This is 2020 on Vision. Well, Christian commentator David Robinson is back with us today. He's also the minister of Scots Kirk Presbyterian Church in Newcastle, New South Wales. His insightful blog is called the WeFlee.com. It's a reference to a nickname that came from atheist Richard Dawkins, who thought David was irritating in his expression of Christian truth. David Robinson also writes for newspapers, magazines, and is the author of a number of books, including The Dawkins Letters and Engaging with Atheists. His latest book is called Seek, and it's our great pleasure, as always, David, to welcome you to 2020 Today. Well, it's great to be with you, and uh, I, I hear you were describing someone as a 20-year veteran. Well, I don't know what that makes me, then. <laughs> I'm a 40-year or something, you know. Never mind. <laughs> Well, you don't look it. I can see you on the Skype right now, and you're looking very good for for whatever age you are. But, David, I want to get stuck into this. Let's talk about the conversion therapy bill. It's being fast-tracked through the New South Wales Parliament. Tell me about this bill. Yeah, well, the first thing is the words you use there. Why is it being fast-tracked? I mean, what what emergency does this require it to be fast-tracked? And uh, because it's quite a serious issue for some people then uh, the, the need to be fast-tracked would suggest there's some kind of emergency. So the idea behind this, now this has happened in Victoria, it's happened in my native Scotland and elsewhere. Uh, the UK government as yet hasn't done it because it's such a difficult thing to define. But the idea is to uh, prevent so-called conversion therapies, even from adults who want them, which is very interesting because we say adults should be able to choose euthanasia adults should be able to choose lots of different things but the one thing they're not able to choose is this conversion therapy so it must be something really horrendous that's going on and i looked at this in great detail as regards tasmania and also victoria and the reality is that um i don't think that this is really about conversion therapy at all i think this is about an ideology and it's about limiting freedom of speech and everything else So conversion therapy in theory is meant to be when you uh, use methods on people to get them to change, uh, well, particularly their sexuality and so on. And I think, um, well, I'm I'm intrigued. I don't know why the New South Wales government are introducing this, because my one question would be, and I'd like someone to answer this, what practices currently going on in New South Wales would you now like to be made illegal? And uh, I think that's going to be a very interesting question. Well, let's stop there. Let's pretend someone's just turned their radio on, David. They're busy people. They don't read the newspapers or watch the news at night. What is the conversion therapy bill? Just explain it in simple terms. Oh, I wish it could be explained in simple terms. I think that's part of the problem. It's basically to prevent any form of therapy or indeed any kind of action which would seek to change or limit someone's uh, particularly sexuality, gender, all that kind of stuff. Um, I think it's self-contradictory. I think it's very confused. Um, And one of the reasons I find it, I think it's very dangerous, is this. So we would all agree there are some forms of conversion therapy which should be illegal and, in fact, already are. Well, let's Uh, stop there. Give me some examples of of conversion therapy, if someone doesn't even know what that term means. Yeah. Right. So let's say that somebody says that um, they are gay and uh, their parents send them to someone who says, right, uh, we're going to torture you until you say you're not gay. <laughs> you know, we're going to or, or we're going to put electrodes on you or we're going to force you to watch pornographic heterosexual pornography. Yeah. Um, so we're going to convert you. So we're going to convert you from being a homosexual to a heterosexual. That's effectively what we're talking about here. So it's. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And. 
and, the, and the, the, the methodology that is being used. Now, the argument is that you can't uh, change sexuality, which is itself is, is actually a, a, a difficult argument, I think, to make. It's saying that that's the one fix. I mean, apparently we can change our gender. You can change from male to female or female to male, but you cannot change. If, I mean, from a Christian perspective, I really struggle with the whole idea of sexuality as an identity anyway. Um, I think it's a form of language that wasn't used until the late 19th century and early 20th with Freud. Um, and I think that, uh, you know, yes, there are people who are same-sex attracted. And yes, there, there are different modes, if you like, of sexual expression. And absolutely, from my point of view, I've oft, always had people in my congregation who, uh, when I was back in Scotland and met many people here as well, who are same-sex attracted and who are Christians, and I've never thought, right, I need to convert you into a heterosexual. Yeah. Uh, to me, to me, that doesn't make uh, a great deal of sense. However, there are people. Imagine somebody comes to me and they said, David, look, I'm really struggling with uh, same-sex desires, which I don't want. Or if someone came and said, I'm really struggling with, you know, I'm basically very sexually promiscuous and I don't want that. Can you pray for me? Now, it was supposed to be, Chris Minns had promised during the election that prayer would not be banned under this. Um, my, under, my reading of it at the moment is that I, as a minister, will be allowed to say what I want from the pulpit. But um, if I met individually with someone and they asked for prayer and I prayed for them, uh, it could be that I would be breaking the law. I'm still not clear about that. Okay. Um, so, and, that, and you've that, read the whole, I mean. have you read the whole bill and even you're not clear having read the whole bill? Yeah. So I've read, well, I've read two things. I've read the summary of the bill and I've read some of the submissions to it. Um, and I think one of the reasons, so uh, the New South Wales government own committee had suggested it be submitted for review, but the parliament's just going to rush this through. They're not going to do that. And, uh, and I honestly think that this is because this is not about um, helping people who are victims of conversion therapy I think this is about uh, stopping any disagreement with the sexual ideology that the progressives and the Greens put forward. So to actually disagree would be in trouble. Now, there's another issue here that's a very confusing one. There are some conversion therapies that the government encourage. What do I mean by that? Well, um, the most severe form of conversion therapy that's taking place in Australia at the moment and in this, Australia is now behind the UK and the Scandinavian countries, is, are the kind of uh, surgeries that are done to help people change their gender. So to put it crudely, uh, double mastectomy for a girl who wants... Um, now that's the ultimate in conversion therapy, but that will not, would not be banned under this bill indeed if somebody came to me, and this has happened many times now, I've, I've been dealing with this issue for many years, and said, look, I, I, am, I feel that I was born in the wrong body and I need to change my body. I wonder if under this bill, if I was to discourage them from doing that, which I would, uh, whether I would be, could be found guilty of a criminal act. You'd be liable, yeah. A problem. Can I yeah. ask, hypothetically, if someone who had a homosexual lifestyle sorry, who was a heterosexual and came to someone and said, I think I want to become homosexual, is there the chance of them being liable or does it only work the other way? No, it only works one way. And that's because what would be said is actually you really are homosexual. Yeah. So that's, you know, this is the real you. Now, incidentally, my, my issue here is not in terms of sexual identity because I question that anyway. But my concern is with the idea that people's sexual practices or even preferences cannot change. So I think of someone like the writer Rosaria Butterfield, who wrote a book called um, Tales of an Unlikely Convert. Now, she was a professor of queer studies at Syracuse University in America. She was in a lesbian relationship. There's a great line in her book which says, I, I, she came into contact with the church. This line goes, I am... Um, so I got up out of my be the bed of my lesbian lover and went to this Presbyterian church to sing psalms. And I just thought, that's one of the best lines I've ever read in a book. And she says, you never know who's sitting beside you in the pew. 
Well, well as a Presbyterian geez. minister, that must have brought you a lot of joy <laughs> reading that one. That, that, well, <laughs> that was funny, yeah. Because, but, but I mean, the, the, the fascinating thing is, she's now married, and um, you know, adopted children and so on. And people say, "Oh, you can't do that. You can't really change." But I know plenty of people who have changed both ways, by the way. You know, and and the idea that. I mean, if a teacher, for example, and again, I, this is an incident I, I, I know of. If a teacher said to a boy, well, maybe you're depressed because you're actually a, a girl in a, trapped in a boy's body. I think that's a, a ridiculous thing to say. But under this law, he would not be prosecuted. If, on the other hand, a boy came to him and said, I think I'm trapped in the wrong body. And the teacher said, well, maybe you should go and get some counseling and help and, you know, before you do anything just, you know, help you with some of the issues that you're having. Uh, they could be breaking the law. So, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's, it seems to me, if there is a problem, which I don't think there is, and, and if it is, it's an extremely small one, they're taking a sledgehammer to crack a nut. And ultimately, this isn't about helping those who are victims of conversion therapy. This is about enforcing one ideology. Yeah, absolutely. And it's also about government intrusion into yeah. our personal freedoms, into our personal choices. Yeah. Because if, an, let's pick on adults, if an adult male or female who has been practicing a homosexual lifestyle decides that they want to become heterosexual, they want to change their lifestyle, and they go to anyone, be it a pastor or a therapist or someone who says, hey, can you help me transition into this new life? That is their right, as an in, or it should be their right as an individual. And to me, what this therapy bill is going to do is basically say to that person, you don't know what you're doing, we know what we're doing, and so that's actually banned, that we're not going to allow that conversation. I mean, that's my reading of it anyway. Yeah, I mean, there are some things. I mean, I, I'm not a great believer, well, I'm not a believer in absolute autonomy for adult individuals. I don't think I've got the right, for example, to walk down the street naked or to chop my arm off. Or, you know, there, there, are, there are limits to autonomy. But our society has a very strong view of autonomy. And yet it seems that in this one instance, it's saying the minute you decide to do something which we think is inappropriate, we are declaring you mentally incompetent, that you're not capable of making a choice. So the irony is we've in New South Wales, we've just said that adults have a choice to end their own life under certain circumstances, but they don't have a choice to seek counselling for unwanted sexual attractions or gender identity or whatever. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, you can see the, the inconsistency. You can see where all of this is going. But also the other bigger issue here is when you talk about conversion, um, as Christians, we're really into conversion. You know? We want people to be converted to Jesus Christ. Absolutely. Now, what happens if – so I've, I, I can think of um, – Two gentlemen who came to me, one, both of them were gay. They were, you know, they weren't in a relationship. They were, in, in, I was, they were involved in a church I was involved in. And uh, they asked what I thought about what the Bible said about homosexuality and everything. And I reaffirmed what the Bible said. And I said to both of them exactly the same thing. I said, I treat you exactly the same as I would a heterosexual. In other words, if you become a Christian and become a member of this church, then you are expected to live by the standards that Jesus taught. And uh, one, of the, one of them said to me, does that mean I can't go clubbing and, you know, have promiscuous sex? I said, absolutely. And I said, that's the same for a heterosexual. Absolutely. And it's funny. Um, one of them said, yeah, I can accept that. And, uh, you know, I'm going to carry on coming to the church. And the other said, no, I'm, I'm, I want to have that promiscuous lifestyle. Um, again, under this legislation, if someone comes and says, I'm, I'm just an adulterer. And I, I like going, you know, sleeping around. Well, am I breaking the law by saying you shouldn't do that? Am I suppressing their sexuality? Am I limiting their freedom? Am I seeking to convert them? Well, in one sense, yes, I want to convert them to a godly lifestyle. Yeah. And I think as, as a pastor, I should be allowed to do that. Now, I never believe I, I, I could or should force anyone. Uh, that would be a ridiculous thing to do. Nor should you manipulate, nor should you use, as Paul says to the Corinthians, you don't use deceptive ways. But I must be free to teach the word of God, and I must be free to pray, and so must other Christians. Yep. Absolutely. And uh, it looks like uh, 
Oh, you're back with us now. We we, we froze for a couple of seconds there. Yeah. But, but David, I think um, it, it opens up a can of worms. But just for all of our New South Wales listeners, uh, whether you're in Sydney or any part of the state of New South Wales, I think this is a call to action for Christians, isn't it? We need to really go there with this, don't we, and, and try and apply some pressure to our local government officials, our state government representatives. So uh, I think everyone, no matter what part of New South Wales you live in, you need to be contacting your state MP and you need to be letting your voice be heard. Because, David, it looks, doesn't it, like this is being rushed through so that all these politicians don't have to stand up and actually become accountable for this, especially not only to the Christian community, but we all know there's a large Muslim population in the city now as well, and no politician wants to be seen to be going against their wishes either. And it looks to me like they're trying to rush this through so that no one's actually accountable for it. Yeah. I mean, I'm not being paranoid or anything like that, but this is not aimed at the Muslim community. And Muslim imams can carry on doing whatever they want to do. And, you know, but I, I do think where it will impact, it will impact uh, a lot of um, Orthodox areas, uh, Christian, uh, you know, Mediterranean areas. Uh, I think it will impact. Uh, I, I think it, it will impact a lot of different churches. And I think the big issue is going to be Christian schools, because that combined with the federal legislation coming up on religious freedoms uh, is, is going to create a very potentially very dangerous cocktail whereby a Christian school won't be able to employ uh, teachers, just employ teachers who uphold their Christian values. That will be a very, that, that potentially I think is, is likely to happen. Or you will find that uh, schools and others will, will, will fear being sued for uh, openly expressing the Christian view on marriage and sex and sexuality and gender. Um, and you could be accused of conversion therapy. I remember uh, one young man being helped by a church with particular issues, and they gave him a lot of help, and they didn't do the conversion therapy stuff as people put forward. But that young man now goes around saying that the church tried to, you know, convert him and all that kind of stuff. And it was complete nonsense, but he got lots of sympathy for saying that. And it makes churches really, really scared. And I, I mean, I'm just not going to give in to that. If someone comes and seeks advice from me as a pastor of what God says in his word, I'm going to say it. If they ask for prayer, I'll pray with them. I will never under any circumstances seek to change someone on my own power or, uh, you know, using methods that I would consider to be unbiblical and immoral. But I, I will continue to pray that all of us will be changed. Yeah. You know, the con conversion is ongoing at one level, you know, repentance and change. You know, some there's this really weird thing in our world where people say, well, Jesus just accepts you as you are. no. Jesus gives himself to you and accepts you because he's going to change you. Yeah. You know, the, the ultimate converter is Christ and the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And uh, I'm, I'm, you know, except you be converted, you cannot be saved. You know, and I'm, I'm a big fan of real conversion. I'm not a fan of what they call conversion therapy. But I think this bill to ban it is a bill that is not designed for that. I think it's designed to suppress any dissent from the progressive ideology. Yeah, and as you said, it's uh, I, I think this. if you want to spiritualize it, it's an antichrist spirit that's going to try and stop yeah. churches and ministers of the gospel and just everyday Christians from preaching biblical truth. To me, that's what the heart of this bill is. It's an antichrist spirit. Yeah, absolutely. I was down in Victoria speaking at an event down there, and some young people came up to me afterwards, and they said, man, you're so brave. And I said, how am I brave? What did I do? They said, you're not allowed to say that in Victoria. Now, they, I think they were wrong on the particular thing we were talking about, but the very fact that they even thought that, and that's what it does. It limits us. It makes us afraid. It makes me Christian media. It makes, you know, people say, oh, can we do this? Can we say this? And companies and everything else. Um, I don't think it is conversion therapy to have a biblical perspective and to have Christ's perspective on marriage and sex and so on. But my fear is that under this bill, it will perceive to be that. The Bible itself will be perceived to be a form of conversion therapy. Yeah, absolutely. 
And so, once again, uh, David, I think you'll agree we have to, if we're in New South Wales, contact our local yeah. state MP and Christians everywhere in Australia. We need to pray against this and pray about this because this is a f- subtle form of persecution against the Christian church in, in modern-day Australia. Yeah, absolutely. And I think um, it's, it, it's subtle at one level. It's designed to intimidate. It's based on lies. You know, I'm, I'm not being over dramatic. you know, when in a spiritual sense, I think it is devilish. You know, I think it is, it is anti-Christian, as you said. And, you know, I'm, I don't kind of bang my head against the wall with all of that, but I just say, Lord, have mercy. You know, I'm, I'm be preaching on Sunday. We've started a thing here alive at five and I'm preaching on light coming into the darkness and, uh, I think that this conversion therapy bill is a form of darkness, and I pray that the light will come in. Amen. Well, you preached that sermon uh, hard on Sunday, David. I wish I was there to listen to it, but I want to thank you so much for your time today. If people want to get in touch with you, your website is The We Flee, and that's we as in when the Scots say it, www.flee.com. David Robinson, I want to thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for bringing this to our attention And once again, Christians in New South Wales, we need to pray and we need to contact our state MP and make our politicians accountable for this and hopefully put a stop to this. David, thank you so much for your time. No, thanks, mate. Enjoyed being with you. Enjoy the rest of your show. It sounds interesting. The domestic violence one, I'm very interested in. I've, I've had to deal with that a lot as well, sadly. Thanks for taking time to listen to this audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. To find out more about us, go to vision.org.au.